Welcome to the inaugural episode of the 1012 Big 12 Special Team Show. I came up with this idea not long before the season actually kicked off to let's talk about Big 12 Special Teams because I look, there is no part of the game that gets as underappreciated as special teams. I, offensive line has a valid argument. I'm not going to ever say anything about offensive line and any negativity, but like special teams, especially kickers, you know, it's only one of those things that it's good when something awesome happens and otherwise it's bad. And the rest of the time we don't care. Uh, I don't think kickers get enough, a fair shake. And so there's enough that happens, especially in college in special teams that can have a drastic impact on the game. Just look at everything Kansas state does on special teams. And so it seemed like something worth kind of going back at each week and looking at the weekend that was and some big moments in the big 12. And then we'll pull one big moment nationally. And uh, as someone who has never uh, participated in special teams or kicked a football through an upright, I am not the person to sit here and do this solo. So I am excited to have guests each week. We are kicking off our week one review uh, with former TCU kicker, former All-American, and now a guy who trains up some of the best kickers and punters in the country. He is Jaden Oberchrome. Jaden, welcome to the show, man. Philip, thank you for having me on. Uh, you know, the Big 12 is an uh, exciting place to uh, to play college football, and, and man, I'm just super thankful to be here. Thankful for what you're doing, man. Before we dive in here, tell us a little bit about what you've been up to ever since your your days at TCU came to an end. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I appreciate you asking. So, uh, yeah, so I played at TCU, played every game for four years on kickoff and field goal. Um, I think as of still, I, I think I have the most field goals made in Big 12 history. Um, I, there's a lot of guys chasing it. I'm, I'm sure somebody will get it, especially with the COVID year. Um, so, yeah, man, we, we made a lot of field goals. Uh, transitioning from college to what I do now, um, man, I've just, I just decided to, to start training kickers uh, probably about seven years ago. Uh, this summer and man it's it started slow and now we have you know about 150 guys in our program uh we've placed guys uh at texas uh the starting texas kicker tcu kicker uh baylor arkansas i mean all over um so man it's super grateful to to be able to pour into these kids lives and uh man when you watch them play on tv when you've trained them since eighth grade it's pretty rewarding too so yeah, that's that's got to be awesome to see see your hard work and see them succeed and and know the the impact you had on them and their game and 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 how grateful they probably are to you for that. Jaden, uh, we've uh, I've picked out a few a few things from this past weekend that we're going to kind of look at. Uh, I wanted to start with Iowa State specifically because look, Iowa State special teams under Matt Campbell during his tenure there in Ames have been. Uh, atrocious they've gotten worse and worse every single year so to see a special teams performance from iowa state that not only didn't cost them a game or or put them back but helped this team out i thought was incredible and i wanted to focus on a right before half after a turnover an interception uh they chose to go ahead and line up for a 50 yard five yard field goal attempt uh, I'm, I'm gonna play the clip from this this is what we're gonna try and do this so everybody this is the first episode so bear with us as we do this uh We've got it on YouTube. We're going to give this a shot. I want to play the clip of the field goal. And just as you watch this, just kind of what's going through this kid's head. I mean, this is a 56-yard attempt right before the half. Uh, you just pulled an interception. You weren't planning to have to go out there and kick this. You're up 20 to nothing, so it doesn't have necessarily a huge impact on the outcome of the game necessarily. But to be put in this spot, your first – big kick like this. I mean, obviously it jacks them up right before halftime. It's a great thing to be able to go into the locker room having done this, but like from your experience, like what's, what's this moment like for, for the team and for him and the idea to come out there so quickly in a spot where you didn't anticipate having to kick a field goal and be put in, the, in this position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge momentum, you know, to, to carry into halftime, especially with a 23 to zero lead, um, you know, first game of the season. So nerves are high. Uh, it's kind of hard to get into the swing of things and get in a routine, uh, you know, the first game. And so to go out to hit a, a 55, a 56 yard field goal. Um, and I don't know if you noticed this, the flags on the upright were on, you know, the the side that he was kicking to. So that means the win was against. Um, so to hit a long field goal, first game of the season, uh, keep your team, you know, going into halftime, the the momentum, uh, man, that's huge. It's, it's a big confidence builder for the team. Um, but especially for the kicker to hit a, a field goal, I think that's the longest field goal or tied for the longest field goal hit uh, this season. I think it's 55 or 56 um, to do that first game in, in Ames, Iowa, when it's windy and that, that grass on that field is pretty thick. 
that's awesome. Good way to start. You, you talked about the wind. I mean, especially the further out, you would imagine the further away, the more the wind impacts it. I mean, yeah. What do you do as a kicker to, to prepare for that? Like, how do you battle the elements as a kicker? Yeah, a lot of it goes into pregame. So you'll you'll see a lot of guys, they try to kick both ways. Um, obviously, being the home team, they they tend to know how the wind uh, plays out in that stadium. Uh, every stadium is different. You know, a lot of them are are uh, closed off on the end zone. So you get a lot of swirling wind. Um, so every stadium is different. So, so to be the, the home team, I mean, I'm sure that kicker knew uh, which, you know, how the wind would affect it. Um, a big misconception with long field goals is a lot of guys think that you have to drive the ball to get it there, um, which is not the case. It's actually the, the same hit really as like an extra point would be. And so uh, the wind just affects it more. So if you maybe hook the ball two yards to the left with no wind, it'll hook about two yards left. If you hook the ball two yards left against the wind, it, it could hook four, five, six, seven yards. So um, you don't have to swing harder. You just have to hit it a lot better um, and, and just make your miss hits clean. Okay. Good to know. All right. So Texas Tech in Wyoming, Texas Tech, obviously losing that game. They had opportunities to score throughout the game, got up 17 on lead, eventually lost in double overtime. Like this is not anything to, I want to make sure that this is not any sort of shot at Gino Garcia. Uh, mm-hmm. He missed three field goals in this game, had one blocked. It was a very tough spot. They didn't do him any favors of his five field goal attempts, two that he made. Four of them are 40 yards or longer. Two of them were 50 and a 55. It was just the 27 yarder at the end. So I, I want to kind of go through these one at a time uh, with you. We'll start with the the first one, the one he made, the 55 yarder uh, early in the game to help them build up the big lead that they were able to get there in Wyoming. I'm out of talk long because I have to try and get this pulled up. All right. So uh, first year, really, as the starting kicker, he was 0 for 1 last season. 14 nothing lead, big field goal, and we're through. So that one was clean and easy. The ball looks to me, though, like it is kind of not clean. Walk, walk me through the actual process of kicking. Like, what do you want to see in your mind, like, from the ball that tells you it was a good kick? Does the, does the way the ball travel matter other than just in a straight line? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, that ball looked like uh... – the the YouTube video is a little spotty, but the ball looked like it had bad rotation. So instead of being end over end, uh, it kind of looked like it had a wobble. Uh, generally, that means your toes up. So it's not a clean hit. Um, but man, what do you want to see as a kicker? Uh, you want to see miss hits like that go in. And so, uh, you know, I, I always tell guys, you'd rather have a miss hit go in than a really good hit not go in. And, and so, you know, you can kind of see him smile after that kick. Uh, man, miss hit straight. That's a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean look if i'm gonna make a mistake but it's gonna work out i'll take it every time absolutely exactly. it's, like a, about... it's like hitting a bad putt that lips in i mean you don't care <laughs> you <know? laughs> wins a win uh, you yeah. talked about the toe like this is gonna sound crazy as someone who's never had to kick a ball through an upright but like how how much science goes into just like the angles of the feet and where the toes are and everything like you think about it just you're just gonna go there and kick the ball as hard as you can and hope that it kicks straight but like how many things do you have to train detail things to get a kick right? Uh, yeah, almost everything. Uh, so, I mean, you go from head and eyes to your left arm, to your kicking feet, to your legs, your hips, your chest. Um, man, everything plays a role uh, and, and everything can cause a different miss hit. So it's, it's very similar to a golf swing. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to kick a football. Uh, but contact is relatively the same across the board. And so, uh, man, really the goal is no one has perfect form. No one's going to hit the perfect ball. In fact, most of your hits will be miss hits. Um, just kind of like we talked about earlier, you just want to make those miss hits go in. So how do you then, as we're going to play, uh, the first miss, Texas Tech was up 17 to 10. Uh, this one from Garcia was a 49-yarder right as the clock was expiring. They had one second left in the game. I'm, 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 as we watch this, you say like you want to see a, a bad hit go in. How does the, to, is there a way to control that? Is it just, you just hope that it was a bad kick? I hope we did my best and I hope it gets in. Like, how do you control the idea of like, how do I make a bad kick go through the uprights? 
Yeah, a lot of it's just based in technique and form. I mean, guys who have, uh, you know, solid and, and consistent technique, they tend to know their miss hits. Um, so that can really play a part to where you aim and, and that kind of thing based off the wind. So in this case, uh, he was wide right on the field goal attempt uh, right before the half, as we mentioned. Uh, what do you see from him here? I know it's kind of hard with YouTube videos because they're so small. But what do you see that makes you kind of go, is it just the distance? Is it the change in the wind? I don't I mean it's Laramie, Wyoming. It's known for being fairly windy. I don't see anything that's indicating wind. But for for you, like going into the halftime, you have this opportunity to extend your lead. You still got a seven point lead going into halftime. Like, what do you as a kicker do sitting there in the locker room going, like, how do you shake that off? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a great question. You know, it's, um, a, a lot of these guys who are super successful tend to have, you know, the short term memory. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I always tell people, like, if you kick long enough uh, for meaning long period of time, you're going to miss kicks. I mean, it's just part of the game. I mean, name one guy who's had a perfect season on field goal. I mean, I can't. And, and so I know it's tough playing on the road. Uh, the uprights look smaller on the road for sure when that crowd's yelling at you. Um, but man, at the end of the day, you're, you're going to miss kicks. And I always tell guys like, Hey, what are you going to do? You know, after you miss one, how are you going to bounce back? How are you going to clear your mind? Uh, and then a lot of it is just kind of expectation of knowing like, okay, at some point I'm going to miss a kick. And then that next one, I, I have to be better. I have to, you know, it could be, it could have been a good kick and you read the wind wrong. I have to play the wind better. I have to fix this miss hit whatever it may be, you know, just teaching guys, you know, to, to bounce back and to kind of erase that memory um, while still learning from it at the same time. All right. We're going to go to his next miss. Now this one, I almost, I think is less on him because this one was actually blocked by Wyoming. This is a 40 yard attempt. It's somebody was able to get through, walk me through the protections because obviously you've got a lot on your mind as the kicker. You're not focused. You just, you just have to hope that your teammates are doing their part to keep you safe, keep the ball and a clean path watching this. And I want to freeze it kind of right here. Like from your experience, what, what happened here that Wyoming was able to get through that line and, and get a hand on that ball. Yeah. I mean, man, it looks like they got a really big push. Um, you know, you can see the, the, the lineman and the center get pushed back, you know, multiple yards. And uh, man, when you, when you have a field goal get blocked, especially after a miss, it, that that's going to rattle you, man, because it's, it's really hard to, to go out there and to, you know, you're basically having a, a battle inside your mind with yourself uh, coming after a miss. And then to have one get blocked up the middle like that, just because of a push uh, from your O-line, uh, a pushback of your O-line, man, that's, it's really going to rattle you just because it's, it's hard to, to maintain and to keep trust and confidence uh, with your protection and your holder uh, and the whole operation in general. Uh, coming off a block like that, man, and that's it's tough to see it. I mean, I I can only imagine it would rattle you. How do you like? What was your trick uh, when you were playing to if you had a miss? Like, what would what did you do to kind of reset yourself and prepare for the next opportunity? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of it. It, it really it, it would depend. If it was a miss where I misjudged the wind, I would just make adjustments. You know, from there on out. I wouldn't go hit a lot of balls in the in the kicking net to to fix something. Um, but man, if it was missed based off wind, I would just kind of learn from it and go from there. Um, if it was a miss based off, you know, maybe nerves or bad technique, um, uh, man, my philosophy was just like to have some sort of like I called it like a fake confidence. Um, you know, and later in your career, you can really do this when you have a lot of kicks under your belt. Um, but you know, let's say you miss like a 45 yarder. Uh, or, or like he did, like a 49 yarder to end the half. Um, I think it said on the stat sheet before that, that his career long was like 59 is what it said, um, which is pretty legit. So like after that miss, I'd be like, I'd be telling myself like, man, I've made a kick in a game 10 yards longer than this. Um, you know, like I, Texas tech out of all the recruits, they chose me, you know, I'm the scholarship guy. I'm the one going on the field. They have so much confidence in me that they're sending me out for five kicks my first game. Right. So that that's what I would be telling myself, just kind of this fake confidence, not in a cocky way, but just to get you through that game. All right. We're going to share the third miss. Uh, this one, a 50 yarder right down the center. That's going to hit off of the right 
upright, which is just, I, th- I call it the, the, the gong of death because that noise is <laughs> deafening and awful. And you just, you hate to hear it. And now you've got what is essentially you had a miss, you've had a blocked field goal. Now you miss another one. Like, how do you come back from that? Like, I, and, I, and I know that sounds bad, but like, how do you, now you've had three different shots this one to tie it, your team's down. There's only five minutes left in the game. Your offense has gotten themselves to this point in the field to give you an opportunity to give get a tie game again. I mean, the amount of pressure that's got to be building on Garcia at this point, like what do you think his mentality was? I mean, I hate that this is freeze frame. He just, he looks terrible, but like, what do you think his mindset is right now? Man, he he wants to, he wants to go home. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've been there. I've been there so many times. I mean, you know, missing a 49 yarder be- before half, that's a long field goal. You know, going out, getting one blocked up, up the middle that you might have hit solid, that's not your fault. And then so you go in for now a 50 yarder on the road after just two kicks that just absolutely, you know, rattle you. Man, you just, I mean, you want to get on that bus and go home, bro. I mean, it's it, kicking's a tough game. You're hero or zero. And, um, Man, I don't think he did. I mean, it's a clean ball. I mean, it hit the upright. It's not like he shanked it. It's a 50-yard field goal, which pros are going to be 50% on. Um, man, yeah, he's looking forward to getting out of there. <laughs> Question. Um, you know, in in my mind, I think in a lot of people's minds, like dead center, like that's the perfect spot to hit. All you got to do is hit, hit that ball straight, right? Um, mm-hmm. But I've heard of kickers who liked to be on a hash mark, preferred to be on a left or right side. Do kickers have a preference? Is it is it by kicker or what, what? What is like the spot to be in as a kicker to try and make a field goal? Yeah, yeah, it depends on the guy. Everyone's different. I liked you know right middle, right hash, just because my ball tend to move a little to the left. Um, I miss it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've heard that too. You know, a lot of guys who who say like, oh, middle of the field, you know, perfect field goal, straight on. It's kind of I mentioned golf a lot. I'm a big golfer. It's kind of like a straight putt. Like, hey, it's dead straight, a middle. You know, it's not gonna break. Sometimes it's hard to trust that, and it puts more pressure on you to hit it straight. Um, compared to like a hash, you know, you can kind of aim accordingly. Like if it's right hash, and you know your ball is going to go left, you could aim, you know, right middle, right upright, uh, that kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, it, it really depends on the guy. You know. uh, Garcia got one last chance uh, right before the end of regulation to send this game into overtime. As we know that it did go into overtime, Texas Force. Tech, of course, eventually loses this game, but not because of Garcia. I'm not putting this game on him in any way, shape, or form. I want to make sure everybody understands that. This is just an opportunity to kind of walk through what's a very difficult situation for a kicker. But this one, much nicer, a nice 29-yard attempt that he's able to get right through, tie this game up, send it into overtime. He's had five attempts. That's a lot for a player in a game. I just It, yeah. it feels like it. Um, yeah. To have three that don't go in, uh, two because you couldn't hit it one because it got blocked. I mean, how big is this moment for him to say like, okay, like at least I get to go home knowing that I didn't miss it. And now we've lost the game. Yeah, no, it's big. I mean, especially in that moment, games on the line to bounce back after like three missed field goals. uh, That's huge. And I'm sure those uprights looked super, super skinny. Uh, you know, when he went out there for that field goal, uh, especially on the road. So uh, that's huge, especially going into, to, you know, week two uh, as a kicker. And, and just to know that, you know, you hit a game time field goal to give your team a chance after, you know, two long field goals and the one that got blocked. Um, that's it's really big. Super proud of Gino. I, I don't want to I don't want to blame anyone for this, but it does feel like that's a lot of pressure to put on your kicker. Like, obviously they have to be able to step up in these situations for the team. That's that's their job is to help make sure that you can try to get points, but to put the, the offense, to put the kicker in the position to have to have four attempts of 40 yards or more, a couple, including one at 50 and one fifty five. that does feel like a lot to put on a kicker. And that's not an insult to kickers or a shot at anyone that, uh, you know, not being able to do that, but it, it does feel like that's an awful lot of pressure to put on one guy to do something that is, a lot more difficult than I think most fans give any kickers credit for. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, if, if anything, it's just a compliment to Gino, you know, I mean, cause if, if he couldn't hit a 50 yarder in practice, they're not sending him out multiple times for, you know, I think he had three field goals around 50 yards that game attempted, um, you know, like they're not going to send him out. They're going to leave him on the sideline. They're going to punt. They're going to go for it. Uh, man, it's Texas tech. Like, you know, they're used to scoring 40, 50, 60 points. 
Um, so it, it's just it's just a compliment to him. He must have had a good two a days, good summer, good spring, because um, he's capable of hitting those field goals. I mean, the one that hit the upright, I mean, that ball was smoked. I mean, I know it's high altitude in Wyoming, but uh, man, that ball was crushed. So yeah, it's it's just confidence in him. That's all it is. I uh, want to talk about the Big 12 Special Teams Players of the Week for this week with you. BYU punter Ryan Rico recorded career highs in punts with nine and a, and in punt yardage with 479 yards. Uh, BYU's 14 to nothing win over Sam Houston. I included a punt of 65 yards. He planted four inside the 20, including one at the Sam Houston three. Uh, Sam Houston never started better than their own 27 after a Rico punt. Um, mm. What are your thoughts on, on him and the award that he got this week? Yeah, I, what was his punt average? Wasn't it 50, 53? Well, let's see, 470. I'm going to have to do math in my calculator real quick. Let's see, 479 divided by three. Someone's like, it's this. Or divided by nine is 53 yards. Yeah, that's insane, bro. I mean, <laughs> people might say, you know, Utah, the ball goes farther. That's in, Those are bombs. I think he had a 65 long yeah. and multiple inside the 20. Uh, I mean, you said it yourself, the starting field position for Sam Houston – um, I work for the Sam Houston guy, you know, um, I text him after the game. I said, how is your one kickoff? You know, I mean, it's, it's hard to score. <laughs> it's hard to score. I mean, you got to drive 80 yards every, every time there's no break. Um, so, I mean, just the, the relentless effort that, you know, that punter had to flip the field made it so hard for Sam Houston, um, on the road ended up being a pretty close game, a lot closer than what people thought. So, I mean, that punter has a lot to do with it. Yeah. That, that is a big question then. Like, as a punter, you're in a close game. You're you have to put the team and the defense in the best position possible to make sure that that they can keep the opposing offense off the field. So you're you're hitting these things as deep as you can. And I, I will find opportunities throughout the season to talk more about punting. Like we'll find some opportunities to talk about, you know, planting the ball, how do you kick it to do the kinds of things you want. But like like what how does that mindset as a punter of like they how, how do they view their responsibility on those punts? specifically of we've got to get this ball as far away as possible. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one part of it, right. You know, to, to flip the field. Uh, the other part of it is, is to make sure it's in the right direction. So a lot of these guys, um, you know, you're not going to punt in the middle of the field, kind of like you won't kick off in the middle of the field unless your coach has no idea what he's doing, but um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of it's just, it's going to be directional. And so um, not only, you know, do you want to flip the field, but you got to put it in the right place because that's how your team's going to cover um, and so, yeah, flipping the field, having minimal returns, that means directional was good. Um, that's huge. It's, it's super big for the defense. Um, it's big for the, it takes pressure off the offense too, because, you know, if they're like, Hey, we, we're going to go three and out again for the third time, you know, at least they're going to be starting, you know, on the other side of the field, um, around their 20, 30 yard line. Uh, so it takes pressure off, off everybody, offense and defense. Uh, the other Big 12 special teams player of the week for this week was OU wide receiver Gavin Freeman. He had three punt returns for 90 yards, but that included an 82-yard touchdown return after Arkansas State's uh, first drive of the game. Uh, I'm not going to – I don't have the video for this one, but I so I can't talk about blocking and things specifically. But, like, look, I don't think anyone gets more excited about a special teams player than a return touchdown. Like, that's – you're just like, yeah, thanks. We'll 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 take a touchdown without having to, you know, have march five minutes down the field. From a special teams standpoint, like we know how jacked the fans get. You see the the offense, the defense, both on the sidelines getting super excited when a guy's running it back. Like, is that like the best moment for special teams? What is the best moment for like special teams players? When are they feel like this? We did our job. This is awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's one of them, right? You know, housing a kickoff, housing a punt, um, blocking a field goal, blocking a punt is huge. Uh, just, I mean, an interception, a fumble, that's one thing. But, man, the momentum shift whenever you block a punt or house a kickoff, man, the momentum is huge. The points are nice, sure. But, man, just the momentum you have. You know, your offense didn't even have, didn't even have to go on the field, um, yet you have seven more points. You know, uh, their their offense was just out there, you know, and they're they're tired. You know, it's still hot. It's September, right? Um, and, and all of a sudden you house a punt or you house a kickoff. You know, I mean, it's just huge momentum. Their offense is back. Your defense is fired up. Your offense didn't have to go on the field. Just the momentum and and the 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 change in direction of the game is is probably even more important than the points. 
All right, I want to end on each week when we do this, I want to end on a, a national special teams play, one that I think is worthy of, of bringing up. Today, we're going to do the game-winning field goal uh, for Minnesota over Nebraska. Nebraska had a 10-3 lead for most of this game. Uh, Minnesota was able to come back, tied up, and after an interception, uh, Minnesota lines up for a 47-yard attempt to beat Nebraska. I mean, you got a game winner. You're not going to lose if you don't hit it, but it's still a huge kick. You got to love game winners. I don't think there's any any better opportunity for a kicker than to seal the victory for your team by putting it through the up there. Look at everybody. It's so awesome. I love it. Uh, I mean, I, Jay, now, I, without going through every game, I'm going to go ahead and take an assumption that you've, you've probably had a game winner in your life there. Uh, what is that moment like? Man, it's uh... – Look, I've I've been married to the prettiest girl I've ever seen. You know, we we have this great life. I, I've done all these great things, but man, the the pressure, you know, how the game slows down when you go out for a game winning field goal, uh, your team jumping on you, your fans. I don't know if there's another feeling that that can compete with it. Um, man, just everything everything goes quiet. Uh, the game almost slows down. And then, I mean, you're going to be remembered for one or two kicks of your whole career, no matter how many you have. And so, man, for that that Minnesota kicker, um, for the lefty to step up, uh, you know, Minnesota actually had two turnovers within the last like five minutes of that game at midfield, because um, I think it was ten to three, and they ended up winning uh, on the last two drives. Mm -hmm. uh, so, man, it's just to start your season off like that to smoke a, a 47 yard field goal at home uh game winning field goal that kid will be remembered for that for a super super long time especially against nebraska uh you know a, a big 10 team so it's awesome uh, don't let your wife see this uh so that she doesn't get upset <laughs> with the fact that you just said the game winner was more was, was better than getting married uh jade man i really appreciate you you have been awesome we are absolutely going to have you back on to do this uh, a couple more weeks this season do me a favor again you are doing a great job training up the kickers of the future we've got trainers in the big 12 that have been or kickers in the big 12 that have been trained by you uh plug the company man let us know like what should who should we be watching who's the kicker we should be watching this weekend going jaden jaden helped him jaden worked with that guy yeah yeah you know uh you know so bert auburn uh the texas kicker right now uh, you know, he had a pretty good game against Rice. He missed a 56, but he made a 49, made another 40, uh, and then made a short one. So uh, Bert's one of the smoothest, you know, most consistent field goal guys in the country. And, uh, man, I've been with him since eighth grade. So uh, so watch him kick. Look at his hair. Let me, let me know what you think about his hair. Uh, <laughs> man, you won't miss him. You won't miss him when you see him on the sideline, especially if his helmet's off. So, um, yeah, Bert would be a good one, especially against Alabama this week. Big game. That's easily the Big 12 game of the week, I would say. Uh, we're going to be keeping an eye on it. Jaden, again, really appreciate your time, man. This was fantastic. Look to have more of your insight here on the show as the season goes on, man. Yeah, thanks again, Philip.